This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, we're here to talk about issues uh, related uh, mainly to the current COVID-19 crisis. Today's date is uh, April 16th, so we're right in the heart of it right now. Uh, with me today, uh, I, my name is Jason McPhee. I'm your host, and with me today I have Tim Everett. He's a, uh, a pilot in the state of California, and he's, uh, you know, flying high on the wings of freedom out there. <laughs> and then uh, we also have uh, yeah, <clears throat> Leon Br uh, Bradwhite, or Brathwhite, rather, sorry, <laughs> Leon again. Uh, and uh, Leon is an author. He recently uh, uh, published a book, Bearing False Witness, um, and uh, he's also a... Uh, a uh, retired engineer from the state of California. Uh, Leon, did you want to tell us just a little about your book before we get going? Yes, the, the, the name of the book, and, and thank you, Jason. The name of the book is Bearing for Witness. It's a, it's a revaluation of Christian teachings. I was raised Roman Catholic, and I've always had some problems with some of the teachings of the church. As a result, I've taken done a little bit of research and, and gone back and look at some of the teachings and and some of my dis disagreements with the teachings. And um, what the book is about is resolving some of those teachings that I believe are uh, in error in the church. Okay. Well, no, that sounds, that sounds interesting. You can buy the book on uh, Amazon? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Just type in my name and the book will pop up. Okay, great. And I guess uh, uh, you're probably leaning pretty heavily on that faith with some of the stuff that's going on today with the uh, uh, COVID-19, <laughs> especially some of the actions that government is taking uh, as far as uh, how it's challenging our freedoms. And so one of the things yeah. I wanted to jump right into is just the confusion that's going on, uh, on right now with some of the government rules. And one of those is, is masks. Um, yes. You know, in, in San Diego, in, in, even in the same state, the rules can be different from city to city. Uh, Los Angeles has has uh, uh, rules that you have to wear masks inside of certain stores. San Diego, it's just sort of suggestions. And these are two pretty big metropolitan areas that are right near each other. And, uh, you know, and, and of course, there's a scattering of different rules throughout the country. Uh, any guys have, uh, uh, Tim, you, do you want to start us out on that one? You're actually, uh, you know, familiar with some of those areas. Uh, well, I don't Yes, I'm from San Diego, so uh, I would say the uh, thank, thankfully there is uh, there is I, I kind of like it that it's different in different places. At least it means there's some localized government. There's not some big giant uh, uh, all powerful um, government uh, that that applies to everything everywhere. So you never know what laws apply to you if they are in fact laws which i i don't know if they are necessarily but uh if uh, they are executive orders or whatever at least they're coming in a local uh venue rather than a big all-encompassing venue like the federal government for example or some world government if that were the case sure so well you know <laughs> I, I, I think I think it's, it's a very valid point, you know, that that we don't have this one size fit all mandate coming from the federal government, and more of our restrictions are coming at the local um, at the local level. But all of these things have to go back to individual rights versus public health. I mean, should the government be mandating that we do such these things in the in, in the first case? Because when you really think about it, there is a a valid issue on both sides. Um, for one thing, about my individual rights, should I be be forced, if 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 that's what it is, to wear a mask because I may infect someone else or someone else may infect me in in, in the process of as we go through this whole thing about the the, the COVID the COVID uh, the COVID virus. So yeah. now, and but the whole issue though of this mask thing is really kind. Of, I mean, if you take this out a little bit further, it, it's really quite confusing. Because if you listen to some of the doctors, the medical experts, quote unquote, if you want to use that word, some of them say you need a mask and some of them say you don't. Because some people claim that if using the mask will cause you to touch your face a little more and thus, you know, that's how disease is spread through your eyes, through your nose, or through your, um, through your mouth. So, and on the other hand, you say if you don't use the mask, then it will not touch your face as much. 
So there are issues on both sides, but this still comes back to my freedom. Should sure. I wear a mask because someone else may infect me or I may infect someone else in, in the process as I, when I go to the grocery or when I'm walking down the street or whatever, I sneeze and somebody walk into my sneeze, I mean, like 10 minutes later, is it well, possible for me to infect them? Leon, so, it's funny because you guys both bring up some interesting points there. Uh, one of them, you know, is the, the, the issue of the confusion and the idea that you have these different rules in different areas. But the other is, is simply to, you know, and, and the fact that, you know, maybe we shouldn't have a, a federal government mandating these types of things. But, uh, you know, on the flip side of that, too, is that, you know, that there's a lot of confusion. If you think you're you're within the law in one area and then you just simply drive to another area and suddenly you're breaking the law and not even knowing it, you know, it's right. uh, kind of a tough, uh, tough issue there. But on the on the other side of the coin, uh, look at the federal government at the beginning of this. They were advising everybody not to wear masks at all. And it appears they might have been wrong on those calls. Right. Other areas of the world right. have been using that and and if we just went with one top down system maybe we, we we picked the wrong you know we picked the wrong rule essentially so sure sure true i mean the the um the Czech, the Czech republic came in that they have the covid disease under um, under good control and if you look at their numbers to date they seem they, that seemed to be true they have very low incidence of uh, on um of um of of covid infections However, however, they are claiming that they are doing everything, everything that the West is doing in terms of trying to manage this disease, manage the infection rate and the transmission of the disease. But the one thing that they have done that's different is that they mandated that everyone should wear a mask whenever they go into public. Now, I don't know if that, that, is, the, that, that is the reason why they're having lower incidence of, 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 of infections, but that is what they are claiming. So, you know, it's it's a really a really difficult issue to discern. Uh, so, what is the truth in this whole matter? Well, you know, one of the things that strikes me too on this, though, is that oftentimes those who are looking for one centrally planned rule to put over everybody will point to the science as though that uh, government entity always has the correct science. And and here was an example where clearly at least one aspect exactly. of correct is may have been inaccurate in the beginning of all this. And if we just assume the government always you know, is, has the science behind it, you know, that may be a, a poor assumption. Um, and moving along uh, on, on other mask issues. Oh, sorry. Do you have something else? No, no I mean, I was just going to say in general, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's a proven fact. We know the government almost never has the right solution to almost nothing. So, so, so it's fine. I'll try a lot of wrong ones before they finally get the right one. <laughs> <laughs> try every wrong one before they get the right one. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still hung up on the part where Jason said the rules that we make is like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like. <laughs> That's definitely being challenged right now. You know, who's, who's exactly making the rule? I, I know, it wasn't. I was not a part of that discussion when they decided to come out with the rules. I don't know about you, Jason, but they did yeah. not ask me a single thing. Yeah, well, we, well, we touched on this in a recent show. Uh, it's a Commerce Clause thing. They're, they're just simply going in and they can, they can uh, CDC can almost make edicts on some of this stuff. And of course, the governor... Yeah. Are, you, are using a lot of their power. And that's that's one other thing I guess we could, I was uh, thinking we could talk about that maybe just a little bit later in the show. But I guess while we're still on masks, uh, one of the other issues that's uh, coming up is I guess criminals are are kind of having a field day because now we're sort of all wearing their fashion, I guess. We're, <laughs> we're in, yeah. in vogue with criminals. Uh, there was a, a video, I don't know if you guys saw it, but in Chicago where two guys were wearing surgical masks and they showed up at a guy's door and uh, I was caught on the doorbell camera, and they opened it up, and they pushed their way in, and and uh, uh, the homeowner, you know, uh, he, I guess he he was able to shoot one of them and kill him, and then chase the other one away. Um, sure. did you guys, uh, uh, you know, you guys have any thoughts on that, on crime, and and what's going on I, nowadays? I, I hope the homeowner himself had a mask on, so he could have gotten away <laughs> with any uh, civil suits by the family of the deceased uh, or injured. Criminals, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but but this this is this is really a a, a a problem not only on the issue of mass and criminals, but also there have been there 
criminals being released from prison because of this COVID, this COVID disease, this COVID, uh, uh, um, because of, you know, those crowded areas are the areas of, of mass infections. And so the, the, we are now being endangered by these people because they are putting criminals on the street. As a matter of fact, there's one story out there of someone who was released just recently and within a week they committed a murder somewhere. I don't, I don't remember exactly where it happened, but that, 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 that have been reported on the news. But the whole idea about these masks, it really, is, it really presents a problem because people could you know, put something on the face and it look all nice and legitimate, but indeed they have nefarious um, um, intent in, the, in their hearts. And we can't, we can't see that. We only see it after they have stick a gun in our face or, or try to rob us or beat us or do God knows what, what to us. So it's, it's a real problem. And I don't know, I don't know what the issue is, what, um, what the solution is to that. But we really I need think, to think about it a little bit harder. I'm pretty sure I, I saw a report just the other day that says, I guess, Los Angeles County has been experimenting with letting, I think, about a quarter of their prison population out, I think. Right. So they, yes. uh, uh, it, now they claim that they're, they're nonviolent criminals, but, you know, uh, <laughs> still a little consolation if you're being threatened by the government that you better stay six feet away from people who wear a mask or will arrest you <laughs> and then you're watching them turn the criminals right they're right out on the yeah. <laughs> maybe they're trying to make room for all of us non yeah -wearing. that's right <laughs> yeah. and i'm wondering if the victims of uh of the guy they let out that leon was telling us um that was uh, was killed. I wonder if they're going to blame that death on COVID nineteen because if it wasn't for the COVID nineteen, right, the guy would have been let True. out. And so True. there's an, another chalk that up on the statistics. That <laughs> not yeah. that I'm saying that they're all wrong. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm just you know I've, I've heard people claim that you know they're they're making uh, you know uh, they're making up. Uh, they're they're tying COVID nineteen deaths into all kinds of things that that are, you know, yeah. that are not we, related to it specifically. Uh, but, as a matter, of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Tim. Oh, go as ahead. a uh, as a matter of fact, the, right now they're reporting that there have been thirty one thousand deaths in the United States, and even that number is apparently incorrect. And here, why it is incorrect? Because what they are doing, what they are doing, is that anybody who die with the COVID virus is considered a COVID virus death. In fact, in the matter that person might have died from a heart attack or from some, uh, some other underlying disease. But anybody who yeah. die with the virus in them, it is considered a, a, COVID, a, a COVID death. Uh, that they, they, they die because of the, 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 the COVID disease. So really and truly, maybe 25, maybe 30% yeah. of the people who are reported as dead because of the COVID virus may not have died from it. Well, you know, this is one of the things that the accuracy of, of what we're hearing and whether or not some of this is just being used to generate um, more uh, more scare in the media. Uh, I, I remember there was a story very early where they talked about, uh, you know, essentially the feeling of most of the population seemed to be that, you know, this is something that is much more uh, of a risk for people who are essentially around, you know, 70 years old or so was the the, the cutoff, or, or at least they were, okay, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so we're, I guess we're overrepresented here, <laughs> but, but, yeah, uh, I'm in deep trouble. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that I think a lot of people were not then taking it as seriously, and so suddenly you started seeing these stories pop up in the media where 21-year-old dies of COVID-19, and I remember seeing this one story about a soccer coach in Spain who died of, of you know, they said of COVID-19 in, uh, in the headline. But then you read the article and apparently he had leukemia. <laughs> there you go, exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, so it's just clearly exactly. there's other stuff going on, but you know, in the, in the headline, COVID-19, you know? <laughs> right, so you get, you get the disease and um, you're starting to feel better and you're recovered now and you just stayed home. But you walk out on your balcony and accidentally fall over to your death, and they blame it. Well, he died because he had COVID nineteen. COVID, yes, exactly. He was yes. home. 
Yes, yes, oh man, what did that? Yes, so he yes. could fall off his balcony, and you know, so that's COVID nineteen. No, I'm, I joke around about it. Not that it's something to joke about, but uh, because um, uh, I, I don't know how truthful any of the actual numbers are. You know, I'm not not being privy to it. Um, sure. But uh, I, yeah, I, I hear. You know, how do you distinguish some somebody in their eighties? Who's on death's doorstep anyway? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I, I shouldn't say that because uh, you know I'm 68. But anyway, um, so they're on death's doorstep, and then they they pick up the disease and they got they die literally from the disease. But you know, there's all these other factors, and and so yeah, you, you have to um, you have to look at the big picture and all these things always. You know, you sure, just, sure. Yes. Well, speaking of numbers and big pictures, one of the things I wanted to touch upon a little is is where we're going with some of these solutions. And it's funny too when you were saying, uh, you know, blame everything on the, you know, disease that uh, you know we can, you know, some of the stuff that we're doing, the, the the problems we're having right now aren't so much necessarily the virus itself, but the path we're taking to address the virus. And yeah. you know, a lot of that's the economic shutdown now. Well, there was just a report out. I think they're saying that yet another seven million are going to be losing their jobs this week in the report. So now we're up to close to, I think it's twenty-four million is the number we're starting to to get toward. So essentially, over four weeks, we have uh, you know uh, three million and about seven, seven and seven or six, and you know now another seven. But it's it's just getting you know rather alarming. You know the uh, the the strategy that we're going to for essentially Leon, what you were talking about earlier is about 30 something thousand deaths at this point in the United States. I think you were saying, and, and, 31,000, uh, 31,000. 31, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, these lines are, are these love, you know, not lines, but these uh, numbers are just getting absolutely scary. I mean, we're talking about, you know, surpassing uh, Great Depression numbers. And we went in a period of about four weeks from the best unemployment numbers just about to absolutely right. the worst unemployment numbers and all from a government edict, which really shows you the power that government has to really take us in the wrong direction fast. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, so. I'm be interested I, I, in uh, learning the uh, over the next six months uh, what the what happens with the suicide rate in ah, the United States and actually yes. worldwide, as far as that goes. Um, yes, you know, yes. So as everyone struggles with losing income and losing a, a job, a career, um, you know, things that were, you know, necessary for their their soul as a human being, you know, things they look forward to doing and, and so on and so forth, that was essential to them, but, you know, wasn't in the list of this essential businesses to the government or, or occupations, whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to watch that. And now that there you go. Are they going to blame that on the COVID-19 when uh, it was, well, to be yeah. serious, you know, are they going to blame that on the government shutdown or what, you know, that increase, whatever increase, there's got to be a baseline of suicide yeah. per hundred thousand population. I, I've seen the numbers before. Don't know them, but Right. So beyond that baseline, what over the next six eight months or two or a year, what's what's going to happen now? Now anything above that, just for population, is going to be attributable. I feel in large extent to what's happened with this government intervention in in the uh, world economy. You yeah. know, you know the, the the thing about this this whole shutdown that is that is very interesting to me. Every year, right here in this country, I'm not talking about worldwide, right here in this country, we lose 30 to 50,000 Americans because of the common flu. We don't shut down the government for that. During um, the 2009, 20, 20, um, 2010, we had the H1N1 uh, uh, virus. We lost about 12,500. The government wasn't shut down. I know they're making the case, well, COVID is different. We don't have... We don't have a vaccine, blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff and things like that. I mean, of course, we had to take some precautions. I can see that. The social distancing, yes, I can see that. Maybe some of the mandates involving masses, I could probably see that, even though that is murky. 
But why we have to shut down the entire economy, the entire economy throughout the United States yeah. for, for this virus? Well, not, not just sure. in, the, huh? in, in the world, in the world as well, because that's, I think, oh, yes. as well, that this this switch is being thrown in most countries in the world right now. And, and you know, it's funny. I mean, you know, how are they, how are we going to get out of this? You know, I mean, everybody, every country is going to be looking to borrow at approximately the same moment. <laughs> once yeah. we get out of yes. So it's, yeah. uh, who, who are they going to be able to borrow from? And the the lines are for assistance now are getting just insane. So not only are there 24 million unemployment claims, but now you've got lines of cars 10,000 long waiting for handouts yes. of food from the government and other food closets. Yes. It's, uh, you know, just the saddest thing. And, if, you know, it's just, you know, if, if people would have, have been able to have just a little foresight and think about this, you know, this is the consequence of the actions of three or four weeks ago. Would we really have said, yeah, yeah, this is sure. what we want to do. Sure, sure. Valid point. Valid point. But you see, but you see, this is, I mean, if we, if we go back to um, a little while ago, we made, we made a joke about the government never getting anything right. And I firmly, I firmly believe that. Here we are, this, drama, this dramatic action are being taken, and we know these people never get it right. So how, we, how do we think that this is going to be right? Of course it's not going to be right. I am not saying we should not have taken precautions. Of course we should have. But to shut down the economy, this is way out of bounds, seriously. Well, and one of the things I wonder, too, is the assumptions on, on how people imagine that we're going to get out of this, you know, as far as the government can't simply, sw uh, you know, throw a switch and suddenly it all comes back. That's exactly. a sort of a fragile uh, dance of voluntary exchange that happens between people. And then and, and we just had a big boot step on. It. In fact, one of the things, one of the ways I think most people are imagining is that we're going to be getting these stimulus checks soon. And, and I, I, I'm not sure if this is, uh, it, this might be the strategy they might be coming out with this handy new dispenser that they'll put the money on. And <laughs> so, you know, just, just so it'll be practical for whatever use that you eventually have. For these <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gosh, considering, uh, considering the shortage of said uh, paper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike represents a real foresight on the government's part. Yeah. yeah. So all, all of us, all of us, was spending our stimulus check trying to find toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the Weimar Republic, you know, it's not worth the paper it's printed on. So it's printed on. That's right. Well, actually, actually, you know, one of one of the interesting things about about that stimulus check, I'm told I haven't seen actually seen one. Is that Donald Trump's name is going to be in the um, <laughs> in memo in the mem on the memo line? So you know what that means now. He's advertising for his his reelection, right? <laughs> on our on our supposed stimulus check. <laughs> Talk about the government creating government dependencies here. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've been a little bit worried that we were going to get massive inflation because of some of this. I mean, we're talking about two trillion now. You know, a few trillion more in the next month or so. And yes, some of these yes. guys, you listen to Krugman, and he's saying, you know, we'd be crazy to let you know to let everybody back to work in a few weeks. And you know, it's like, wow, you know, <laughs> if if we if we let if, if if we keep everybody down for months, we're going to be, I, you know, I guess he's the guy who says that we should just keep spending in the debt. So I guess this is a yeah. dream for him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since you brought his name up, I have to mentioned the uh, Contra Krugman uh, Libertarian podcast with um, uh, Tom Woods and um, uh, Bob Murphy. Uh, so uh, the, they always um, have a retort to things that Krugman says uh, as part of their part. As that's the whole thing about their podcast. So it's really, if you haven't seen it, you got to you got to look at Contra. Krugman. I'll bet they have some fascinating things to say right now about. <laughs> yeah. Krugman, Krugman is like is, is like the government, you know. He never gets anything right. <laughs> <laughs> Not even as often as the broken watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and if he if he gets it when, when he gets it wrong, he always uh, blames it on somebody else. Exactly. <laughs> which is exactly which is exactly what the government does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blame it on the free market. 
Well, you know, one of the other uh, numbers I wanted to mention, too, I, I saw an article from the World Trade Organization, and they were mentioning that uh, they, they thought, uh, you know, uh, global uh, movement of merchandise might be down anywhere in a good scenario, only 13 percent this year, and in a bad scenario, about 32 percent is what they were projecting. Um, and, uh, you know, and this on top of all of the trade strife we've been having over the last, you know, years uh, to boot, you know, where, you know, we've been questioning, you know, at least people anyways have been, you know, questioning, you know, how the, you know, how the free trade was uh, working for us. And so uh, um, that's just something too, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, it certainly it seems like a big concern, you know, I mean, I think about the, uh, uh, um, the, the, uh, Warning to uh, from my whole trying to think of that French economist now. I can't think of his name, the old, uh, the uh, one from a few hundred years ago. But essentially, when goods cross borders, you know, Bastier, you know, Bastier, that's it. Yeah. Mm. So that uh, when goods cross borders, armies don't. And, you know, you know, that's that's concerning when you see this massive True. pullback of trade and then suddenly there's a lot of sable rattling, saber rattling against China and, you know, maybe yeah. pulling back a lot of trade there. So, you know. You got any thoughts on that? Well, this whole, this, I mean, I mean, this all goes back to our, our internal dramatic action, right? We we shut down, we shut down the economy internally. Obviously, we if you shut down the economy internally, nobody's gonna be trading with the, with the rest of the, at least few people will be trading with the rest of the world because the economy is, is, is shut down. And the whole idea of the development of any nation, whether it's, it's the United States or Canada or whoever. Is voluntary exchange, both internally and externally. That is what develop economies. When you shut down those two things, internally and externally, you of course you're gonna collapse your economy. And what is happening right now? We are, our our economy is about to collapse. So we gotta be careful here. We got some real problems coming up potentially. I know we can't just turn. We we ain't gonna be able to just turn a switch and everything is gonna be okay. We're gonna have some problems. So I hope to God we figure out how to how to get get ourselves out of this mess that has not been created in our names. Certainly. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, you go ahead, Tim. Yeah, just uh, Bashi's quote was regarding uh, trade um, uh, barriers or barriers to trade. Uh, so he was saying, you know, that quote. And um, in this situation, I think what we'll see is what Leon brought up more than actual barriers to trade that are. I don't think they're going to, hopefully, they won't add more barriers to trade on top of the issues that exist. But the issues that exist are like what Leon was discussing, the, um, the lack of productivity. And it's not going to come back overnight. So uh, for a while, goods and services is, uh, will not be available in, to cross borders uh, because, because of lack of productive activity. And it's going to take a while to, to bring it back, but All right. you know, I, which I think it eventually will. But in the meanwhile, we we're going to suffer uh, sure. to our um, standard of living. Well, that I think, think that just about wraps it up. Thank you guys, though, for these insights and joining us. And hopefully, we'll be able to talk about this some more in the coming week. This is Gail Morgan. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast on YouTube and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.